An Inuk singer reinterprets big hits from decades past. When Inuit were shifting to a pretty much a new world, right? Those songs carried special meaning for Elisabi. We wanted to kind of break the rules and not just be these nice little Inuk girls. Her translations are transformative. This weekend, Canadians mark National Day of Truth and Reconciliation. And tonight, we're breaking down how the universal language of music can reach across cultures. This is Inuk singer Elisa P performing The Unforgiven, a song by Metallica. Yep, that Metallica. Elisa P's version is from her new album where she covers classic songs from Cyndi Lauper's Time After Time to Blondie's Heart of Glass with lyrics in Inuktitut and videos of archival pictures from the north. Elisa P says these songs are important to her and her Inuit community, as she explained to me when we chatted in Toronto's Glen Gould studio. Okay. Elisa P, such a, a pleasure meeting you and congratulations on the new album. Thank you. Nakormik. So from Metallica to Debbie Harry to, to Cindy Lauper. What inspired you to do an album of, of cover songs? I got in a place uh, during COVID you know, pandemic. Uh, I started running and then somehow these old songs that I used to think were fun memories started being a little bit more on the very emotional um, side. They, they, they just became I don't know, something was stirring, and I was like, what's going on? Why am I crying to ABBA song, you know? <laughs> um, and then uh, I started realizing uh, there may be some, you know, locked up closets of mm -hmm. emotions that needed to be unlocked. Because this is also uh, songs from late 60s, 70s, 80s, when Inuit were shifting to a pretty much a new world, mm -hmm. right? So I think there's a lot of, um, Nostalgia, I guess, that just hit me and I said, okay, I must get this out because it's it's here and it's just too much. So, and I decided I'm going to translate them to Inuktitut mm -hmm. because I've always wanted to do a cover album for fun, just for me. So this is what I thought I was doing until it became much deeper. Yeah. I, I love to think about the power of music and especially pop music, right? Mm. So there are people in villages in Africa, there yeah. are people in the small town I grew up in, New Brunswick, and there you are in Canada's north and we're all listening, even though we're different ages at times, listening to some of the, the same music. I always say these songs were ours too. Yeah. Because we often think of Inuit or indigenous people in general, they had their thing. Mm -hmm. Yes, we did, we do, but we also wanted to be part of somebody. So when we listen to Led Zeppelin or Blondie, it's for an instant of a song, we felt like we were being heard, we were friends, you know, um, or somebody cared enough for us to, because they, they get to our hearts too, yeah. but they made us dance. Uh, so well, it I connects think, us, right? Like I, yes. I have that, ex you know, my experience with that music, you have mm. an experience with the music and some of it overlaps, right? Yeah. But you can take it a step further as a musician. And so you, so let's talk about Heart yeah. of Glass for a moment, right? Yeah. Like, so I think it was like 45 years ago that song came yeah. out. <laughs> Um, so you you have a memory of it as a child yeah. listening to it, but now you've you've reimagined it, right? It's a beautiful version. And part of it is the translation to Inuktitut. Mm. That couldn't have been easy. 
It wasn't easy. I think it, I wanted to make it um, so people can start to remember things maybe differently, not just, oh, I remember my dad and I used to dance to this song. Yes, but what also went on that time that maybe you need to bring back because... What do you mean by that? Um, because we need to heal, you mm -hmm. know, I think music does uh, accompany us through our healing journey a lot uh, during dramatic experiences, you know, being of course, um, Inuit being uh, literally being told you have to change now the way you live, you mm -hmm. know, so I think it's a lot of violent, it's very violent, you know, the things that we went through, through during these very dramatic changes. And, and you've talked about like ex so much suicide uh -huh. that you almost become have to have to become numb to it. Oh yeah, yeah. We have become numb. I have become numb. Uh, we lost so many cousins, too many of them. Mm -hmm. At one point when it's just too much, you start to just, sometimes you don't even cry anymore. Imagine. So yeah. I think when all these songs like Metallica started coming back in a whole new way for me, I started remembering and also acknowledging that these people, we shouldn't just forget them. So for me, it's not just the love for Metallica, it's also um, the idea that it's so beautiful is to say that Metallica was there for us when we were able to express a lot of things. Uh -huh. They expressed it for us. So I think it's also a way to thank these artists, these musicians in a way because they've been our, like I say, they've been our friends during all this time, so. Time After Time, yeah. the Cindy Lauper song, which is a beautiful song and mm -hmm. your reimagining of it is beautiful as yeah. well. But tell us why you chose the video that you did for that. Oh, um, Time After Time, I think that era, um, these are people from home. I also see people who are happy, and I also see a community that's thriving, you know, like um, that's really wanting to just keep moving. And there's innocence in there too, that's so beautiful. Um, and also because Cindy Lauper pretty much changed all the little girls everywhere, but in the north too. Wow. We wanted to be strong like her. We wanted to be loud. We wanted to kind of break the rules and not just be these nice little Inuk girls. It's like, no, we wanna, we wanna rock. Tell me about the moment, the person who made you realize that you could, as a young woman, actually be a singer. I had a friend who really believed in my abilities to sing. Mm -hmm. I was a teenager and uh, I was like, yeah, whatever, I guess, you know, I was more, mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, she said, okay, sing, just sit and just sing that song. I'm like, okay, just, you're so amazing. And then we got the album of uh, Susan or Luca, the cassette. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what? Like, you can do that? It's like, it's like a lightning hit me. Wow. It was, it was, I, I, I had to like sit down and I'm like, okay, the news is you can be an Inuk girl and make an album and produce something like that. I want to ask you about something completely different just because, you know, we're sitting here and mm. I, I'm, I'm curious, you're such a thoughtful person. This has been a summer of, of devastating wildfires, mm -hmm. you know, everywhere in Canada, including yeah. in the north. And it's made a lot of us kind of think about, worry about the impacts of climate change. And I'm just wondering for you, what, what, what have you been thinking? I have been thinking probably Inuit saw this coming because they've been witnessing since I'm young, so the hunters would kind of say, okay, um, that area, uh, area is, um, the ice is melting very quickly, so be careful, saying this never happened before, and it's just often uh, a lot of accidents also. It's, it's very scary because 
this is not something that the nature deserves, you know, and the fact that it's really impacting even more the north, um, it's just so unfair, you know, because we, we are people, indigenous people in general, Inuit people a lot because we are taught to be uh, very respectful to the nature or else it's going to make your life uh, complicated. Mm -hmm. So we are very, the, the nature is the boss. And I think we could have maybe followed a few rules or, you know, how to go about respecting the land where we are. There's so much to learn. And, and I, I, I do think that listening to your music, even though I don't understand an mm. it, and looking at the videos, like it's going to have an impact. I want to. I want. I want people to 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 see beauty, you know. And beauty is not just always. Oh, let's dance. Beauty is also crying and dancing at the same time. Mm -hmm. That's that's for me. And I think these songs belong to everybody. Um, I just want it to be the most real, the way I was wanting to sing them, and to really bring in all, maybe all, maybe the pains but the love also mm -hmm. and the joy and and the space where i was brought up i wanted all this to fit in in a blondie song or a cindy lopper song it's so fantastic talking to you and uh, it's been really terrific to get exposed to your work so thank uh, you very much nakomi thank you for 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 taking the time and i'm very happy pleased to meet you no, yeah thank you same Na here nakomi so behind the scenes, there was a logistical obstacle, and that was getting permission from the songwriters of each of those songs to make the changes that Elisa P. did. Only one group said no. A lot of others obviously said yes. And Debbie Harry from Blondie actually wrote Elisa P. an email to say how grateful she was for the reimagining of her song. As artificial intelligence changes how we work today, some students are looking to the future. He also wants to be in the military, so like, AI can help. How these advances are shaping their decisions. <music> Elementary school kids reveal their hopes and fears around AI. If it takes over and then we're not actually able to like do our job. Tech advances are top of mind as they prepare for some big choices. Jobs like a therapist, AI cannot really take over. This generation has crucial questions. And helping us find answers is Arjun Ram, a news contributor to CBC Kids and a high school student. So he has a real stake in what he's breaking down. Hi, I'm Arjun Ram and I'm a CBC Kids news contributor. I'm in the 12th grade and I'm already making decisions about university and future career choices. It got me thinking about AI and new technologies in the workplace. So I'm here at a school in North York to observe a Google presentation and talk to kids with similar questions. Let's do it. All right, everyone. So we're going to welcome Komolovi here from Google to talk to us about uh, AI. So actually, what is AI, right? I think we all know it stands for artificial intelligence. Another way I like to describe it is that it's augmented imagination. And basically, it's a way to make computers think a little bit more like humans. I'm in grade 12, and I'm obviously looking at future career paths and things that I want to pursue. Uh, but the question of AI is always in my mind. You know, Maybe I should change my career path because of new technologies that are on the uprise. Right, so I, I do not know if you need to change your field, uh, but I think you need to be very aware of, ha of how AI could impact your field. Can some of you throw a few things at me of what you want to be when you grow up? Yeah. A pediatrician. Oh, very cool. Lawyer. Lawyer, nice. What do you think about AI making an impact in your field of medicine in the future when you're trying to get jobs? People, instead of just actually going to real doctors, they'd Google themselves, and perhaps that could be the wrong diagnosis. Would it ever make you think about changing your career choice? Well, if it takes over and then we're not actually able to like do our job like yeah. how we would want to, then I would say yeah. Your mom's a social worker. Do you think that AI might take away from the real 
essence of what it's supposed to be? Uh, when it comes to social working, social working requires a lot of feelings, emotions, some, something that AI doesn't really feel at all. That's why uh, jobs like a therapist, AI cannot really take over since AI can't really feel emotions. So now I have a lot of thoughts about some of the decisions I have to make on my own. So who better to talk to than the school's guidance counselor? Hi, Ms. Greco, thank you so much for Hi. doing this. Nice Thanks to meet for you. Coming. Thank you. So I'm very interested in broadcasting. I mean, it's why I do this, uh, why I'm doing this right now. It's my dream, something that I want to do in life. What would you tell someone like me who's interested in that field but is also thinking about AI and its impact? I think AI in broadcasting may be used more as an enhancement okay. to support, to help. Um, because you always still want to have that human touch and that human experience, but speak to your speak to your professors, go to the guidance office, um, ask around. You know, in terms of what does the future look like? Talk to people in the industry. How do you think AI uh, will play in the field of acting and public speaking and, and media and things like that? Yeah, well, AI taking place of many jobs causes financial problems and people's jobs are taken up. He also wants to be in the military, so like AI can help like form different kinds of ammunition or like different ways of training for stuff. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Those are great thoughts. For a wrap, I would say stay curious, stay cautious, um, and stay involved. Our junior and your final year of high school. Keep in mind, some of your teachers may be watching, but are you using AI in your studies? Uh, not at all. If anything, AI uh, is prohibited in our classrooms, uh, both to use in our classrooms uh, and to use outside of classrooms for our schoolwork. Our teacher told us on the first day of school, uh, if you're using AI for your work, I can detect it, and if you're using it, you get an automatic zero. Uh, and for me, that's like the last thing I need right now applying for universities. So uh, no AI in classrooms at all. And what about your future with AI? How do you feel about that? Uh, it's definitely a scary thought for me, uh, trying to move up this, uh, this world of broadcasting, right? Because my dream is to be a broadcaster, but I often think about if AI is going to report on the news or write our articles. So it's a scary thought, uh, but at the same time, I'm proud of the advancements that we're making in the technological field. Uh, so, so that's something that I'm proud of, but it's definitely a mixed bag for me. Yeah, well, lots for all of us to figure out. Thank you very much. Thank you. And CBC Kids News is celebrating five years of creating content for young audiences, including articles, quizzes, and games. If you have a child between the ages of 9 and 13, you can check out cbckidsnews.ca. A Canadian quadriplegic man has completed a cross-country trek. His race to the finish line in our moment. This is Kevin Mills taking a moment during an incredible journey, one he once thought was impossible. Mills suffered a serious injury over a decade ago, but with a lot of work and some extra inspiration, he was able to hand cycle across Canada. His victorious trip past the finish line is our moment. I'm a quadriplegic, so I have some use of my arms, but not full use, uh, so I don't have use of my triceps or hands. I was injured in 2009, and just over 14 years ago. With rehab and a lot of work, I was able to gain some function back, and I started hand cycling, and eventually my friend Nikki proposed the idea of biking across Canada. I don't think she really realized the magnitude or importance of what she was asking. For the last four and a half months, we've been biking it across Canada. We started in Cape Spear, Newfoundland, near St. John's, and just yesterday we finished at the breakwater in Victoria. So it was over 120 days of biking. It was challenging, there was lots of obstacles, uh, at times frustrating, but it was such an amazing experience. I have memories of each place. The finish line, we had all our family and friends. It was everything I hoped it would be. I hope it encourages people, especially with people with disabilities, to get out, get active, and know they can do it too. Boy, especially that last video on that rocky road. It is such a big country, a beautiful country, but a challenging one. And it is interesting how many people, Terry Fox, of course, but so many others have taken on the challenge of going from coast 
to coast, and it certainly is an inspirational story. Thanks for being with us. You, you can watch us anytime, anywhere on the free CBC News app and subscribe to the Nationals' YouTube channel. I'm Ian Hanavancic. Thanks for watching.